you can be basically penalized for not signing up for Medicare. Each financial decision is not in a silo by itself. It has to be looked at how it relates to something else in your plan. And most people are not looking at the big picture. The big picture. This is John Smallwood. We are talking about Medicare today. I have a very, very special guest. His name is Dean Graziano. He's a pharmacist by trade, and he's now in the Medicare supplement business. He has a tremendous amount of knowledge to share with you. Welcome, Dean. Welcome. Thanks for having me, John. I appreciate really, it. There's so much information going on right now in the Medicare world. We have a client base that's now maturing. People are, I think there's 70, what is it, 75 million people? Yeah, at least. Are over the age of 65. Right. Right. And that, um, that, there's so many questions that p people have. And what I want to achieve today is I want to understand the basics and then I want to understand the issues of really making the right decisions when it comes to Medicare and Medicare supplements. That's the right way to go with this because two things when I, when I think of Medicare, and I got into this whole weird business of Medicare and Medicare brokerage and Medicare specialist because, just as you said, we're all getting older, even myself. Who knew? Before you know it, you're in your 60s. Boom, and we're like, is. bang. <laughs> you know, really got involved with dad. You know, my father and mother turned the age. They got penalized. It actually cost them money. And I'm a healthcare professional and did not realize that you can be basically penalized for not signing up for Medicare. Yeah. So I figured if I don't know, how many millions of people don't know? I mean, I should know. And when you ran, I mean, when you ran your own pharmacy. Right. right. And you've worked for other pharmacies and you have another one now, it's... The amount of people that came in with questions and just had it's zero knowledge about this thing. Zero. Was it like everybody? Pretty much. <laughs> pre pretty much anybody who's close to that 60 age and thinking about Medicare. I mean, of course, you know, in my community practice, we had a lot of younger people. No one's thinking about Medicare. Right. Maybe if they have a, a, a love, you know, a father, mother, grandmother who's, who's on it, maybe they start thinking about it. I mean, I have stories just from now where... In my practice, I'm, it's long-term care pharmacy now, which, of course, you're going to see all this kind of information no, that's necessary. That's your entire market. That's your entire market, right? And, and a lot of it in that situation has to do with the prescription end of it. And, you know, so then you start researching a little and you see, wow, there's like four parts to Medicare. What does all these, you know, A, B, C, D, what does that mean? It sounds like the alphabet be simple. soup, right? It should be as simple as A, B, C, D, but it, it's not. No. Right? No. Like so, the old line, kiss. You know, I always grew up with kiss. Keep, keep it simple, simple. stupid. <laughs> this should be simple. All right? This should not be difficult. Right. But yet, anytime you're involved with regulations and government, it's never simple. Yeah. So never let's let's frame it for everybody that's listening. I turn 65. What happens? So at 65, actually prior to 65, you're going to get a letter probably from Medicare. How saying, much? How much? Social sooner? Security. It, it's usually six months. OK. You know, I'm going to be 62. I haven't gotten it yet. But <laughs> when you're turning 65, probably six months before they're going to they're going to reach out to you. Say, hey, you're turning 65. Uh, you're eligible for Medicare. Now, what people don't know, and this is where specialists and brokers like myself come in, is, okay, what do I do now? All right. How much is this going to cost me? Is Medicare health care really better than the health care I'm, I'm with? Again, this is a different time frame than, like, you know, I keep referring to my dad, but he retired at 62. Right. So people don't retire at 62 anymore. Not okay? a lot. Not a lot. Not a lot. But, and, and. You know, nor it's up to you. It's, it's a personal circumstance. So let's just situation. Create, let's just create one avenue. I turn sixty five, but I'm still working Work. for the corporation I've worked for. I'm not retired yet. What are what, what are my what decision are points? Your decision points are a. You have to sit down and look at how much am I 
currently paying for my health care through my employee, my employer. Yeah. Right. Is and that's what we would do. Look down. Okay, how much am I paying? How much would it cost me to take Medicare? Can I take Medicare if I'm still working? That why, was the other thing. Why wouldn't you be able to take it? People think that you you would be able to. There's okay. no reason not to. Okay. So even though you're on a health care plan with yes. your employer, you could opt out of yes. the health care employer. Yep. And if you're contributing, that makes a ton of sense. And then you can drop over into Pick Medicare, Medicare and right. then go get a Medicare supplement. Right. Now, the other thing is Medicare A, you automatically get at 65. Automatically. Automatically. That's a... Premium free, doesn't cost you any money in most circumstances, 99% as long as you worked 10 years and you paid What does into that cover? It. Medicare A only covers hospitalization. Only hospitalization? Only hospitalization. What does that mean? Basically think of a banquet hall. Okay. An empty Good banquet visual. hall. Yeah. And there's like a bar in the corner. That's all you get. You get nothing. You get a bit. In, in this situation, if you go to hospital in med A, you get the room with a bed in it. Nothing else is covered. So if I have, if that's my only coverage. That's your only, and gets better. That coverage comes with a cost. Even though the premium's free, you have to pay a deductible every 60 days. So if you're in the hospital okay. for 60 consecutive days, you're paying, actually for day one, you're paying $1,600 deductible. Day out one. of your pocket, day, day one. one. Right. So I didn't buy anything else. I was cheap. And right. Now, if I mean, you don't I have, have any advantage event. or supplement, you have an hospital event, you just take Medicare, so I'm saving the money on a premium for any other supplement, or I'm not, didn't sign up because I didn't think I had to, or didn't want to, or just didn't think about it. Now, boom, I'm in the hospital. That's a resetting deductible after 60 days. So every way. 60 days I'm getting that, but now I'm not getting, there's not full coverage for no, all the stuff that's going no. on. No, not right, exactly. So that's any tests they run, any medications, anything. That's surgeries that they do. Surgeries they do. That's all separate. It's just paying for the bed. You're paying for a bed. That's all you're paying for. All right. So Medicare A, everybody gets at yep. 65, regardless of whether I'm retired or working. Correct. Boom. They're going to sign you up for Med A. You still need to sign up. But you have to sign to up you. for it. Is yeah. there a penalty for yeah. not signing up? Not for Med A. You get penalized for not signing up for Med B when you should sign up for Med B. Now, so how do you know should when should you, you sign up yeah, for Med what, B, yeah, right? Yeah. If you do not have credible coverage, that's when you get penalized. Can you define credible define coverage? Credible <laughs> coverage is, is, is a definition put out there by the government. And what that is, is employee coverage, but even some employee coverages may not be credible. Mm. Like if there's less than 20 employees, you have to take Medicare. People don't realize that. If you're working for a company with less than 20 employees... You have to take Medicare B. So you have to take Have it. to. Because they don't consider that credible coverage. Because the group is less than 20 people. Correct. It's not credible 20. coverage because it's a small business. Correct. I mean, how many people work for small businesses Correct. that make this mistake? Now, what's the penalty? 10% for every, I think it's every month I've done that, that every year that you don't sign up. 10%, which 10% gets, percent of what? 10% of your, uh, what? they the government deems the cost should be so i can come up with numbers again i'd rather sit down and is with that an off individual the medicare, it, but that's off the that, medicare website off yeah, the medicare yeah. part b cost. part b cost yep. so like if you know you have income below a certain number it's like 179 dollars yeah right so now it's on 74 this year it's 174.50 yeah yeah, yeah whatever so, but we're talking about that 10 yeah, percent of that yeah. Yeah. monthly Mon so for the yeah, year yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty oh it gets costly now okay so I take the B, mm -hmm. or I don't take the B. So let's just frame this for a second. I'm working for a company with less than 20 employees. I need. I to have it. to do this. Yes. I work for a company that's massive. Don't have to. I don't have to do. I can stay with I get, your I, coverage. I, I have a. That's considerable coverage. I'm still working. Consider, I'm 69 right. years old. I'm still on my medical plan at work. I do not have to come off that until I stop working. Correct. Okay. You don't have to. You don't have to. But sometimes it may financially be better for you. Right. So what I see is, let's say there's a deduction coming out of my paycheck for the health insurance. Right. That number could be four or 500 bucks per month, depending upon the company that you work for. Right. Could be more. Could be more. Right. Could be Could less. be husband and wife. So it could actually be substantially right. more. Right. So then the math really comes down to is, can I get... 
the same value coverage and say, I go pay the, you know, what's my income? And that income is going to dictate what the Medicare B is, whether it's the 174. Correct. And then you add the drug Now odds. you're getting into the IRMA thing. Yeah, the, the individual, Irma. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you make too much money, you're going to get penalized and you have to pay a, an upcharge, so to speak, on that med, on that Medicare Part B now, what is premium. That, what is that threshold? It's changing. Yeah. Uh, like ballpark. Coming around. So ballpark figure is we always look at 100,000 single, 200,000 uh, joint. joint. So that's the normal 174. Anything above that, I think it's up to 105 actually this year in 210. So everybody from above zero that scales up. So everybody from like zero to living just on Social Security. Right. All the way up to 200,000 married, married and joint from, pays the same. Pays the same. 174.50. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. That's interesting, yeah. right? It's painful for those that are below the 100,000. Oh, big time. Okay. Now, okay, so... And that's monthly. That, that is yeah. monthly. So, okay, so now the math comes down to, mm -hmm. do I pay whatever my income, my IRMA income is? If I'm paying 300,000, it's going to be more for... for Scaled up. Yeah, the ma Medicare there's a max B. of like 540 a month for Part B. That's, that's, a, that, like three that's the that's higher... Like that's the That's a... Yeah, roughly um, anything over... Three, I think it's four hundred thousand. I gotta pull my numbers up again. They change, and yeah. and the reason I want to use them right now is because they're rescaling it. Yeah, and it's, it's all gonna be different. In, and it's gonna in change thirty days, right? Or ninety right, days, right? And when it comes out, they, yeah, they don't put it out until the fall. What I see often in employer negotiations, also, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say I work for a small company that's under twenty-two people, under twenty under people, 20 so people. it's not reasonable care. Or I work for a large corporation. If I elect out of the health insurance. Often there's a payment that the employer will make back to you. Yeah, that's true. And people don't even ask that question. No, they're just like, they don't. oh, they're 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 not framing this bigger picture to say, oh, I can actually get five thousand. You know, let's say my employer is paying a thousand dollars a month for me. Right. And they Damn say, God. well, if you're going to come off and go on this, let's do the math. I'll it's give you six hundred bucks yeah, a month more. Exactly. Or I'll give, even give you a thousand. Uh, yeah, right. Like whatever you're it saving is, me. And you'll make you'll make a spread. Yeah. Not yeah. all employers are as nice as me. No, but, no, um, no, <laughs> no. But but, but it, it behooves you as an employer because it brings your total coverage rates down. Because the more older people you can get off my health care, the better is it is. Your group that'll is skew my whole group back 100%. down. Hundred percent. Brings the up. No, it, it so sounds crazy, but it's the truth. The greatest ripple yeah. effect is yeah. it's like one action creates all yes. these different actions, yes. right? So, Unintended consequences. So like now, that. okay, we got the person who's working who hasn't retired yet. Right. Now, I have so many people that have gone out at, let's say, at 64, and they, they're, on, they're on COBRA. COBRA doesn't count as credible coverage when you, when you turn 65. So that's what people may not know as well. So you turn 65, you have to take Medicare. It's not credible. Not credible. It's part of my group, but because but I'm paying for right, it. It's not credible. And it's not being automatically When you're deducted. 65. Yeah. Yeah. So now I am 65. I turned 65. Right. But I haven't elected Social Security yet. Correct. How is that payment making being made? Do I have to write them a check? You'd have to write them a check if you're... If you're quarterly or... Quarterly. Is it quarterly? Well... Here's the thing. If you're, yeah, if you haven't taken, you don't have to sign up for Part B. Yeah. That's the only payment you're going to have to make. Let's say I'm 65. When you do sign up for Part B. And I'm on my spouse's coverage. You're going to have to write a check. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm yeah. on my spouse's coverage. Right. As Does that become the supplement? My spouse's coverage? Or I'm just on her coverage still? If It, it depends on how you, if you're on their coverage, then that becomes the primary. Here's the thing. It's mm. still considered credible coverage if you're on your spouse's coverage. If they're if their coverage for is a credible with greater right. than twenty employees, right? Right. Okay. Right. All right. So I'm 65. I'm retired. Mm -hmm. Spouse and I retired. Right. I now I'm on A. I now elect B because mm. I have, have to. to. Now, I may have had three, four, five hundred thousand dollars worth of income, and then I retire. That's a good point. Right. And now. There's a how far does it look back? Two years. Two years. So if you're retiring in 2025, we're looking at your 2023 income. Now, or where you, not us, the government is. Yeah, the government, and they're pricing it based on. And they're pricing on, it based on that. Now, what people don't know is there's a little nice little loophole in there yes. called what? It's it's an Irma look back period where you can Change actually. Yeah, we yeah, and you can, you have 60 days actually from when you join 
to file a change, a of, change circumstance. of circumstance and appeal your Irma election. Because my income has gone from 500 right, to 120. Exactly. I need to exactly. I need to appeal that 60 days. If I don't do it, is it on you the open enrollment? Still, you can still, if it's not, you, if you don't appeal within 60, which I just looked up to, you can definitely do it. It's another form that you'd have to, you know, if do you they refund you legal, back, if you and pay access, and they don't refund you back. No. They don't refund you no, back. No, no, no. They no, keep no, your no, money. No. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, their yeah, money. Yeah, they're going to yeah, keep until, it until you know. You, the the goal here, obviously, for everyone is to get a fair sh shake at this, right? Obviously, when you retire, your income for most people changes. Yeah. Not everybody, but for for a lot of people, if you're on a fixed income, but I, I'm saying the majority. I'm using statistics here. The, pe but, the 75 million people who are over right, 65, the right. majority of them have significantly less income. Right. If you're on a pension plan, at retirement, then, right? Exactly. Than they had when they than they had working. when they were working. <clears throat> tax differently, Absolutely. the whole thing. Absolutely. So Sorry I that. take the B and I go. Mm -hmm. And whatever my, I might do the change of circumstance. I might not have to because my income can keep me on the right side. Right. When I'm doing my retirement planning, me as the retirement planner, I, I got to make sure that, that I mm -hmm. factor the income. So, you know, married, finally joined or single, I'm keeping it below certain numbers if possible. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Now, now comes there's C and D. Right. So just explain big picture what C and D is. Big picture. C is med advantage. Okay. It's what is med advantage? Med advantage is privately funded Medicare through a private companies. For example, a Netna, a Cigna, a Cigna any of those big Blue companies. Blue Shield. Right. So what you're doing in that case, it's equivalent to Medicare, which Medicare is given by the government, but it's privately given by these companies. So it's a, and you're saying that's a Medicare Advantage. Medicare now, Advantage. Now, what's D called? D is, D is a whole separate issue. That's just prescription coverage. Okay. And that's pretty new because in, I want to say 10, 15 years ago, maybe I'm dating myself, they didn't have Part D. When you retired, you were on your own with prescription coverage. Right, which is a whole thing we're going to talk about. Which a whole other thing we're, we're going to talk about. We're going to dive we're, into we're that. We're going to dive into that. Yeah. But, so that's what Part D is. Part D is prescription. Part okay. C is Med Advantage. Part B and Part A. Part B is your... Doctor coverage, your test coverage, okay, and Part A is just your hospital. So when I go to C, there's Medicare Advantage, which falls into the concept of the Medicare supplement. It falls into the advantage, the the, not a supplement because supplement that's where people get hung up. Yeah, on. That's, that's why we're here. Yeah. That's why we want we want to the get on home. is still put is still run by Medicare itself by the government. So with the med subs, they're not controlled by the government. But it's part of regular Medicare, or original Medicare. Okay. Once you get into a Med Advantage, it's a private company. Okay. So that's the difference whereby we're talking about HMOs and PPOs, like yeah. most companies have now, yeah. right? So when you go with a Med Advantage plan, you're basically buying coverage through a, a Horizon Blue Cross or whoever it may be. You're buying a private product. Okay. As your Medicare. Now, it's not a lot of times they're they're stick is it's a zero co zero premium so it's very attractive so, so I, mean, it's I, can very get attractive. This, I can get this medicare advantage with zero with premium. zero premium now the caveat to that is they're a private company therefore they lay the rules in other words they require you to go to which doctor they want you to so it's like, it's an, HMO. like an hmo they require you to have certain prior authorizations to go places they require you if you need a test doctor says they find a lump in you and they you want to do an MRI, they won't. No, no, no. You can't get the MRI until you do an ultrasound. Which if it's a lump. Which if it's a lump, you want to know right away. Yeah. When I get sick, I want to know right away what, what's wrong with me and get it taken care of. So a Medicare supplement would allow me to supplement have control? Supplement allows you everything. Have supplement control. is 99% of the doctors in the country take it because well, it's original Medicare. And it covers 20%. That's the other thing we didn't talk about. Yep. If you don't take anything with Medicare, if say you just sign up for Medicare, part A and B, you have Medicare coverage A and B. Yep. What does that cover? Like we said, A only covers the, ho the, the hospital, hospital bed. bed. Cut, you still have to, you're on the hook for the 1600 deductible. After, after 60 days, you have to pay a $400 a day deductible. Mm. On top of that, after 90 days, you pay an 800. It's so just, somebody that's, somebody that's the not paying. Add up. Somebody that's not paying uh, for a I premium. Remember, I remember my father, right? Mm -hmm. 
we he he's 72 at the time and he's got he's got a medicare he's got medicare medicare supplement he's got plan g or whatever Correct. and we'll plan talk g. about it. yeah yep. and good plan he's in the hospital for 90 days he's in an icu for 90 freaking days right and i happen to get the bill there you go the bill for the first 30 days was 1.4 million yeah and now he had medicare and medicare supplement and then the supplement paid like 175,000 and he had no responsibility for that none what if he had like other like if if he didn't if have he had, g if he didn't have g and he didn't have any coverage he's on the hook for not only that bill he's also 80% of that bill. Well, I should, sorry, 20% of that. So not all these numbers add up. That's what I'm saying. When you do math on this, you have the deductible numbers, you have this number, you have that number, right? Yeah. They all come up to Medicare, plain Medicare pays 80% of whatever the cost, not count deductibles. You're, you're on the hook for that whole deductible. Correct. But whatever that other bills are that you get in hospital, you, Medicare pays 80%. What about the other 20%? Mm. You have to pay that. So... If you do all those numbers, say, so it's, that, a, say uh, it's a million dollar bill, he'd be on the hook for two hundred thousand dollars. Right, and he was in there for three months in an right. ICU and not making money. Yeah, and and think about how that is going to affect your wealth curve, <sighs> right? The pressure, the pressure and on the retirement. Curve. Wonderful segue. Pressure on the curve mm -hmm. is is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so Plan G picks up that twenty percent. So now I'm sitting here. I'm sixty five. I have to understand there's a whole, you know, the average person from the stats that I've read during retirement, non, non long-term care, mm -hmm. just the average person has over $250,000 of non-reimbursed medical expenses in retirement. That's a, that's, a, that's one of those wow. things that the Financial Planning Association has that number out there. Husband and wife, it's, two, it's 250. So that's coming. That's the average person. So that means somebody's got more and somebody's got less. I hope I'm in the less. Yeah. Right. Right. We so, all hope to be healthy. So if I pick, if I take Medicare Advantage, and it's free, I have bigger deductibles and bigger out of pocket expenses. And yeah, and there's things that are gonna. It, it's pay as you go kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, there's no premium, but it's pay as you go. The thing, the way I like to look at it too, with Med Advantage, you don't even know what it could be. You have no idea. Now, what you're going to be on the hook for. Right. And I heard... Until it's too late. I heard there's some repricing potentially happening out there into Medicare Advantage that would take it from being free to actually having a cost. Yeah. I mean, so far, I, I've researched that and, you know, they haven't come out with everything. It looks like they're trying to keep some of these plans... Free. Free. Um, but they're not all going to be... But they're not all going to be... You know, what they're going to do is, and, and people might not know too, is med advantage plans, they're not all free if you look at IRMA as well. Mm. They take into account your Part B income as too. And it may be free if you're under a certain amount, but they haven't spoke that. that. Okay. But yeah, it, it's just... So it, now I come in and I'm like, okay... So it's a moving... For the most part, most people that I talk to, mm -hmm. most people mm -hmm. that I talk to, not John Q. Public. Right. People that have significance, they have wealth, they have kids, they have a future. They want to make sure that when they get sick, they're taken care of, 100%. right? And they don't want their personal assets to get eroded because they've worked 40 years to accumulate this stuff, and they all see how it gets taken very, very quickly. Right. Now, I'm looking at Medicare supplements, and there's a whole bunch of different mm. companies out there. There's different, you know, we talked about Plan G just a second ago, but like right now, what are the decision points that somebody should, you know, I'm looking at, you know, different plans. What am I thinking about? Like, what do I need to factor into my brain? As far, well, the bottom line. How do you, I choose you, the right, you, how you, do I choose it? Two things you have to look at. There's a lot of different sub plans, um, but there's really only two. You have a G and I believe it's the, and is the other one? And yeah, N, yeah. N. And the the N is basically an offshoot of G, whereby instead of G covers everything. So in other words, w w when I tell people is when you look at a plan G med sub, yeah, your premium may be one hundred and sixty five dollars a month when you first start at sixty five, but for that one sixty five, you you know you're paying that a month, and you know you have a two hundred forty dollar Part B deductible every year, so you know you have to pay that. Those are the only two numbers you're ever going to have to pay with a plan G. 
Okay. So you, she you picks actually, up everything. You actually control your costs. You control. You you can actually control your costs with a Plan G. Interesting. Uh, I, and again, you know, I want to bash on, on all Med Advantage plans. Some people need to take a Med Advantage plan. My mom's on one. The problem with the Med Advantage plan, you really have to consider from a financial planning standpoint. What's, is at, you, what's at risk? Is your, your wealth is at risk. You, you don't know what it's going to cost you, as well as your health could be at risk. Because again, think back prior authorization. How many people love prior authorizations for anything? Nobody wants to have to listen I to get on the phone insurance and go, company. I have a tumor. Have I want to go. Yeah. You need you yeah. need to come in four four weeks later. Oh, you can't get an appointment with your yes. doctor with your yes. primary care doctor for yes. how many weeks? Yes, exactly. And I need that person to now give me a thing. Now I want to go backwards. So mm-hmm. I go on. I'm on Medicare A automatically free. I'm 65. I take the 179. Let's say my income's below 200,000. I take right. the 179. Then I do a prescription drug plan with the government also that brings it up to about 197, 198, right? Well, a month. It, all in, all in. Uh, it's it's you take your 179 plus. You take your 175, say, you take your Part D plan, which on average may be $20 a month. Okay. So and that's covering my and prescription premium, drug plan. That's covering your prescription. All in, you're looking at 350. Like that, w- when you sit down with somebody, if you're under 200,000 joint, you're looking at 350 a person a Between month. Medicare and a Between Medicare, Medicare supplement. And, and a supplement. Now, how are my drugs covered? And uh, now we get into a whole different ballgame. Right. So that Part D. I'm on, right? I'm on, I'm on 52 drugs now. I'm right. Just <laughs> I'm on no drugs. <laughs> you know, the best is no drugs, of course. Right. But when we're talking about, and, I, and I've and i written a few Part D plans, and I look at, at people's medications lists, and when you start getting into certain medications, which I know came out today, and that's, by the way, for 2026, that list, not, yeah. not 2025. We'll hit that in a second. But let's, let's these are expensive, we right? There, there's some expensive meds out there. Yeah. Brand name meds, as you know, if you've ever gone, unfortunately, anyone who's so like, had to do that. Like, think about, just just name one generically for a second. Like, what is, like, what does it cost for, not Viagra, Gen- but like, what does it cost for? Oh, Sildenafil? <laughs> you want to go into that? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give you a brand name one, because it's usually the brand name ones that, that are that expensive. Are, that are expensive. Yeah, like Eliquis is out there. Eliquis, okay. Tons of people are on Eliquis. It's a great drug, right? Yeah, and that's going to be affected by that new that's law. That's affected that by the new today. law that's coming out. Because mm-hmm. that drug will cost you, without a prescription plan, in the neighborhood of $600 a month for that one medication. For the one medication. One medication. And I could be on two or three. Right. And if you're on Farziga and these other anti-diabetic drugs that are new, let's put it this way. Any commercial that you see out there, like Ozempic commercials, yes. those drugs are... Big cost factors, thousand dollars a month. I'm on six hundred bucks a month. Mm -hmm. How do I? What would I be choosing to get it below? So you need to go into Medicare. If has a system, has a a website that you can actually type in the meds that you're taking. You type in your zip code, and you hit boom, and it it gives you a list of companies. Part D plans, such as ARP, such as United, you know, whatever the, co- and it rates, if you adjust them, now there's buttons you have to click. So you have to be pretty computer you literate people, to do this. You have people I help. totally do for okay. them, right. but it, nice. it'll come up and boom, gives you, this is the best premium. What what the, you have to look at is based deductible taking, plus premium based on what you're taking. And it'll tell you if that plan will cover that drug. That's the supplement. That's the, no, that's the Part D. The Part D. We're on Part D drugs right now. So it's separate. Separate from the supplement. Just want to clarify. Yeah. Because we get, there's right. so much shit spinning here. Yeah, right? there's a lot of stuff. Right. Going. Yeah, so, it's kind of why you need to sit down with a broker. It's not, it, it won't be long, but it's still very informative. And here's the thing. Here's the thing that you have to understand. Whether you do a Medicare Advantage plan mm-hmm. or you do a supplement, the advisor still gets paid. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so like, yeah. don't worry about like, oh, he's going to get me from free to no. a thing yeah. and I'm going to actually end up paying more because he wants a commission. There's a commission either way. There's a commission by whoever. Even if it's free, the advisor yeah. gets a yeah, 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 commission. Yeah. I just yeah. like, you, people need to understand that yeah. because it's like, if you put it that wall down. It doesn't cost you to sit with a broker, yeah. It, if you it put that wall down, like the broker's going to know, because the broker, here's, here's the incentive to the broker. You're going to renew this thing. Right. Over and over and over again, and there's going to be changes, and you want somebody that you can talk to that says, this just changed. I am woefully underprepared to talk about this. I know the concept, the minutia. I never want to talk about this. This is not, yeah. like, it's important, though, People, because I see it from a protection standpoint. When we build a wealth curve, right, you've got your blueprint, and on the bottom is that protection. The healthcare cost 
is a thing that basically is a torpedo that rips through somebody's plan and sucks all the wealth and puts it in the in somebody else's pocket, right? A hundred percent. So so I'm here, so I'm taking in part so I got I'm in the C section, I got my supplement, whether it's free or I choose to pay. Mm-hmm. Now I'm in the D, which is what we're talking about. Which, right. And and a lot of times with the C, with the Med Advantage plans, most of them have a part D already associated with them. Right. So, so you don't have it's to a bolt on. Right. It's not a it's not a bolt on. There it, is a website it, it, to pick a part C plan, by the way, a Med Advantage plan, you do have to do similar things. You have to put it a zip code in mm. and you have to see what plans are available in your area. There's a plan. There's certain plans that are only available in Monmouth County. There's certain plans only available outside of Monmouth County. So across you have the to, entire country, right? All across the right, and and state by state, the premiums are different. State by state, the plans are different. Mm. You know, it's like any a lot of insurances. Like just now, State Farm just got a raise in, in premium insurance. I know that because my mom has that particular plan. Yeah. But they're entitled to to, <coughs> and then there's some. Homeowners that won't cover people in Florida because of the rates, right? Yeah. People, the same thing in, in healthcare with with Medicare. They won't. Private, like Med Advantage, doesn't have to be in this state. If you love a certain health plan, a uh, company, yes, y- they may not have a plan in, in your, your area because I move that you can buy. I pick up and I move I from move, Monmouth right, County to, right. to, to even if you XYZ, just move to, right, right, and that may not. And I, now I lose my coverage. Right now you you get a special election, which is called, so you don't get penalized, but you have like a certain amount of time to pick a new coverage that's available in that in that plan in that yeah. zip code. So that's how Med Advantage works, as long with the Part D, right? You don't really have freedom to pick a Part D plan in that case. They're kind of all locked in and associated. So that's another thing you really kind of have to ask: is if I'm on a lot of medications and I'm taking a Med Advantage plan, is that insurance associated with that Med Advantage plan? That, yeah. that prescription insurance is my drug on there? Because I've seen too many people walk into a pharmacy and be totally shocked six hundred dollars by how much they're paying and they say but i have coverage and i'm like yeah but your plan but your plan doesn't that's not on that formulary yeah yeah yeah." so i'm going to give you like a two minute ad here not even right Mm -hmm. so if you're listening to this and you want somebody to help you dean you can go to his dg medicare that's david you know dean graziano dg medicare.com or you can call him or text him at 732 221-7494. Two two one seven four nine four, and we're gonna hit that at the end of this also. But I just wanted to put Thanks, that John. out there for a second, right? Because this is, I my concern always is this is so complex that people, and I'm pulling up something because, um, the this morning as I you know look at my news feed, I see in red prices of ten drugs in Medicare negotiations says the U.S will save six billion in the first year. Now, this, I just want to just I want to read it because I found this to be really interesting. The government estimates that the new prices could produce six billion in net savings for Medicare in 2026 alone is when this thing goes in. So basically they've taken 10 drugs that they are, and I'm going to read the drugs, right? So it's and I might <laughs> bastardize these yeah, things, yeah. right? But it's Genuvia, right. it's Flas or Novolog, for for Fiasp and Novo, yeah, that's it. That's an insulin, the Fiasp. For, for, what is that for? Farziga. Farziga. I've heard the ads nine yeah, times. Yeah, you see the ads. Yeah. Enbril, Jardians, Stellara, Exrelto, Exrelto, yeah. Exrelto, Eliquis, and Entresto, and Imbruvia. You did good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, here's what's interesting. This is part. And this is what struck me. So Medicare is negotiating that they're going to drop the prices. It's going to save Medicare $6 billion. Right. And I thought about this for a second. And I, here's my big question. This is connected to this is coming on the one-year anniversary other inflation reduction act which gave medicare the power to directly hash out drug prices with manufacturers for the first time in the federal government's program for 60 years so it's like a really great thing but i sat here and i said Im- who's going to see the savings yes is how exactly. is that going to reduce my inflationary impact on the pricing of my medicare are we getting is the 
is the consumer sharing in the six billion dollar savings or is the government just saving it yeah. and are they going to raise our rates or lower our rates that's and that's always that's the way i look at it too john when you when you sent this to me and then i, I read it and like oh shit, that's things. great the, the first thought it is great because i'm thinking okay the medicare system in and of itself for people as we're, how many people are getting older right yeah. everyone is going to be baby needing boomers. medicare baby boomers those are numbers are going to get crushed it's incredible right what, what's how coming? are we going to keep that up yeah right so, so okay overall yes we we need to save money in medicare or find a way to keep it rolling and substantial and, and out there for for our younger generations even right, right. But, but who benefits who benefits you know getting into politics so the, so again the so the drug companies which you can love yeah. or hate i don't really care yeah doesn't matter but if they're getting six billion dollars less are people getting laid off? Yeah. Hundred. So what's the ripple effect of well, that? Two ripple effects. In my mind, I have worked a little bit in, in pharma. Yeah. You know, but again, it's like any like business. Like 35 years you've worked yeah, in pharma. Yeah, right. Yeah. But, it, but it's like any business too, though, right? You can't expect them to pick up the tab. You can't expect them to lose money off their bottom line. No. And not make some kind of changes on it. Right. Okay. So, so things are going to change. Something's going to happen. Manufacturing is going to get reduced. Right, People are going to get right. reduced. They're going to, or maybe they'll say, okay, this drug, do we really need to charge X, Y, Z for it? If we come down in this drug, maybe we can charge more for this drug. Another thing I see happening as or do a we, pharmacist, or we, we, or do we come out with a new version of the drug and call it and call it blah, a, blah, blah, right, blah. and then market that and, now and it's put no people in the on tank. that, right? Generic prices have gone through the roof on, roof on certain medications. Why is that? Generic prices are supposed to be cheaper, right? Yes, right. Because the by, companies by nature they're generic. Because companies stop making them, you you have only one, you know, competition. Mm. Before generics, you had a million. Now you only have one company making them. So now you'll see, or they're not used as much. So therefore, they raise the price on them. Right. It, it's just it's a snowball effect. I, I so the Inflation Act is supposed to help inflation. Yeah, and what what's it really going to do three years from now, five years from now, but four six years billion from now? dollars? How much is it really saving you? Do we really believe that? Like, what would be if, if I'm paying Medicare premium? Everybody's paying. Right. Everybody's paying this one seventy nine, and they go up every year. Yeah, yeah, every year. So if I'm paying one seventy nine, and it went up like, what did it go up last year? Well, Six percent last year. I, it may go up ten percent this year. Yeah. So it's going up ten percent. Doesn't sound crazy. It's only ten bucks, right? Eight bucks, but still <sighs> on a every fixed year, income. On a fixed income, plus all your groceries, plus all the other crap. Yeah. Look how much that went up. Right. And my insurance, my you know, like everything. <sighs> so it, I'm getting stressed out. Yeah. But um, right. I just don't understand how we can build something as an inflationary reduction act, and all we're talking about is the fact that the government's going to save the money. What I'm seeing is it, when, we, when we simulate it, right, and we show a client, you're making $130,000. You've got Social Security, a husband and wife, and you go through that what's known as like this tax torpedo, which is when your income goes from 43000 to 63000 mm -hmm. ballpark, those numbers are not 100% accurate, okay? But your Social Security goes from not being taxed to being taxed 85 percent of it being taxed that's like a mat when you look at the increase in that thing now i layer a pension on top of that and i layer maybe an ira distribution and i've got one hundred thirty thousand. Mm -hmm. what i did the other day for a client single was, were they single the, i don't recall but their income was one hundred thirty thousand, and the tax and the current thing without salt was twenty one thousand. When we sunsetted, same income, twenty four thousand. That's a lot of money. That's now That's you it. couple that with a ten percent increase on the Medicare, which then the Medicare supplement is going to go up because of we because we, because can, we can, right? And then my long term care cost goes, goes up, goes right? Up. My premium on that. This is like putting a tremendous amount of pressure. It's not creating any inflation reduction. No. Like we need deflation. There's no. no. <laughs> I don't, we don't, we don't no, I, I, I love I it. From but, but like, we need prices to come down. Yeah, not not relatively come down, but come down to actually come down. Now, we we had some fun here. Okay, what do you want people to take away from this? Like, what is if I had one thing to take away from this conversation, 
and I go home and I talk to my spouse, which I could be sitting on the couch and listening to this with my, mm -hmm. you know, I could be viewing mm -hmm. this on my YouTube channel. I could be looking at this on Spotify. I could be looking at this on, on Apple. I can look at it on Spotify. I can listen to it on Apple. Nice. Okay. All right. So, but what do I want people, like, what should they do? They really should. What, what I would like to see people do in general is to sit down, discuss it if you have a spouse, or take an inner look at themselves and say, I need to understand and, and realize that as we get older, we may be healthy as a youngster in our younger ages. At 62. You know, even at 62. <laughs> yeah. Right. So when we're young, we don't you think about we don't think about health care. We don't. I didn't. I no. never thought about. And, and I always thought, what do I need insurance for? Right. I'll just take the basic cheapest insurance because it won't matter. I want people to realize it does matter because as we get older, I don't care how healthy we are. We're going to have little things that happen to us. And when you go to any kind of doctor, physical therapist, it's going to cost you money, any kind of diagnoses, right? So you need to realize how much stress that's going to put on you financially mm. as well as mentally in your later years. I want you to sit down, think about that, and I want you, when you sit down and look at Medicare, and it can be very overwhelming, and you may not want to take a serious look. People don't want to think, you know, I'll worry about I'm it getting later. Getting older, worry oh, about it later. I'll just worry about it. You later. don't want to worry about it later. You want to worry about it now, so that later won't matter. That you did the proper preparing now, yeah, so why? that if this happens twenty years from now, you're and getting covered. getting with a professional, getting with and then Dean, sit down and call me. Sitting with <laughs> sitting with Dean and saying, yeah. text them 732-221-7494 and say, I would like some help. Hundred percent. There's no cost for the help. None. It's free to go through this process. Go to dg, dgmedicare.com. Check out the website. You can re, you can get an appointment there. You can see Easily. some of the stats. You can see some of the stuff. But I think what's really, I just thought of something. If I if I live in Monmouth County, New Jersey, mm -hmm. primary residence, and I spend six months in Abaco, or Portugal, or Florida. And I'm on Medicare Advantage. You're, what the hell happens to you're, me? You're, you're, you, it's, that's a very good question. And that's where you'd have to sit down. That's too hard to just say off the top of your head because you got to look for a plan that covers you, A, being out of the country, B, being out of the state. There's so many different variables there. How that's people, a really good question. How many people do not know this? If you get sick on Medicare... And you have one of those plans that doesn't cover you being sick out of out of the country. You, you, there goes that wealth curve. There it, goes all your savings you you thought you had. Now it's your liability. Now it's so you. JP, it's on if you. If JP wasn't covered from right. Florida, but he was in Abaco, right. and he had 1.4 million, probably wouldn't have the same hospital. Probably would have not even made it through that hospital at that point. But. Yep. People move like I see people wanting to move like the cheapest like you see the ads like the cheapest place to retire is blah blah blah. By country. the way, Florida's not cheap in healthcare. <laughs> no, well, no, it's actually double. Everybody's journey. there because everybody's there, right? Um, and it ain't cheap. So like I see people like I'm gonna move to Florida to avoid taxes. I'm like, well, your New Jersey taxes are like twenty two hundred bucks, right? Right, but you move down there and your Medicare and your and your yes. and your premiums yes. and all this other stuff's yeah. gonna be higher. Because even the car insurance is Plan G in premium Florida. in Florida, I found, because my cousin actually lived there and we looked at hers, is twice what it is here. Plan G is twice in Florida. Twice as in Florida is, as, as the premium here? is 165? here. 165? 165 roughly you can get it. So it's, it's 320? It's 320 down there. No lie. And she had lived in, in Texas where it was even che It was cheaper in Texas than it was in Florida. So Dean. So it really is state You're going to help variable. me think about my consequences. Right. So if I'm really. Exactly. If I give you the big picture and I say. I want to spend six months in blah, in Alabama. I want to spend six months in South Carolina. I'm going to be back and forth. My plan choice is really, really important. Very important. I mean, I might be better staying in New Jersey residence with Plan G and going to Florida for six months and staying in New Jersey residence when I look at the macro plan. Oh, absolutely, because Plan G is still covered in Florida. If you have a Jersey one, it doesn't matter where you are and you get sick. You're still now, covered. if you make a lot of money... And then it doesn't. It I've maybe. seen people making a ton of money in retirement and moving to Florida saves like a hundred grand a year. 
that's pretty freaking impressive, right? But that's part of the picture, yeah. Right? right? That's what you need to. That's why yeah. you really need to understand and yeah, sit yeah. down and say, "Is it worth?" And again, you know, we get back to: Should I take Medicare? Should I take my employer? You sit down with me, and I'll tell you right away. I'm not here just to sell a plan. Right. I'm here to make sure it's best for your financial and health status. So, what is the most expensive state in the country? Oh, that's a good question. I didn't look at that. Yeah. You didn't look at that? I, I didn't, didn't look, look at that. Either. Sorry, I got to look at that. We didn't pre-plan we this We didn't pre-plan this, as you can okay. tell. But, I mean, we could always Google it quick and pretty easy. But, yeah, it, it's... My chat GBT will, it, it will tell is, me. Yep, yep. Yep. Here's what I think, okay? This is really... this. I think this is really a great conversation. I think this is something that I think people need to dive into this when they're in their early 60s and early start pre-planning pre to understand, you know, does my corporation, if I opt out, you know, offer me a reimbursement? That's actually a good thing to look at. Does my, is my plan considered credible coverage, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if my spouse is, you know, two years younger than me, we've got this gap. That's so how do we plug that gap? How do you right? plug it? Right. Right. These are things that I think people don't spend enough time on, and then they leave the office and they're like, "Oh, I'll worry about it later." And then it's like stress. Yep. All right. So what I want yep. everybody to jump into is, you need to, you need to get very clear with Dean about what option that you should take. You need to get clear with us on the macro picture of like, what is the income? What can we do to reduce the income? Should you do a you know, change of circumstance, right? And when do you file that? When do you file it? Yeah. You know, we've been doing this for a lot of clients and they're like, I didn't know that you can do that, right? Right, right. And people it's, don't. It's, I didn't know that we can do it either until I found it's out funny. about it, right? right? And it's like, there's so much information that we don't know. The, what I'm finding in our financial planning process is when people come in and they, and they give us full information and they tell us everything that they want to achieve, the amount of cost savings that we're finding just from looking at the big picture, like I was with a, a client the other day. She's in her 70s. She has some issues. She had an accident in her car a couple of years ago. And the insurance company's charging her for a 10-year-old car twice as much as I pay for my car. Yeah, that's just... All right. It's $3,700. And I have a brand new car, right? Okay, right, <laughs> right. Insane. I'm paying less for two cars than she is for one. And I was like, "What?" And she's living on a fixed income. Right. Yeah. And it's like, so you go in and you just start shaving that these things back away, and start yeah. looking. Go, okay, go to this professional, see what they can do. Go to this professional. There's not one professional that is going to be able to do all this stuff for you. No, right? it it requires a team. My good friend the other day, um, Eric Rothman, who's been an advisor forever, and I want to. Just shout out to you and say thank you. He showed up in my office with this beautiful uh, metal uh, crew boat, right? So it's four guys in a boat, and it's you know it's made out of you know bolts and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And it's the guys rowing. It's oh, cool. like this is a team. Like we, even though we don't work directly together, we have worked as a team sharing ideas together in the in the business, right? So it's like that is how this thing works. The accountant, the attorney the the medicare specialists like you need people that are specialists in these areas to help you coordinate and your advisors should work together in this unbelievably harmonious thing what i find like i was i sat on an event yesterday industry driven and it was about a complex financial planning process and the two guest speakers just basically argued about opinions and bias for like 40 minutes and it, like the chat was blown up like stop stop effing arguing arguing like stop you know like it was literally hysterical to me and i'm like this is why this That's industry wrong. is all full of shit. Yeah. Because everybody's got opinions about stuff and they're all twisting numbers and twisting shit. And that's the stuff that we gotta get out of. And you gotta nail this down to like the consistency is get good information, understand your unique circumstances. Because your circumstances are different than your neighbors, they're different than your spouses. Like, yeah. can a husband be on one plan and a wife be on another plan? Yes. Yeah. So like you don't have to have the same plan. No. There's right? savings if you're on the same plan. You get the family break. But yes, but, you don't but, have to be on the same plan. But good planning with nope. predictable cash flow, Correct. despite inflationary increases, is really good planning. Absolutely. I'd rather spend a little bit more money on premium and know that I have zero cost 
than to have a low cost and have this big, you know, iceberg coming at me. Yeah, that you don't know. You know, as I, like I always like, you know, the devil you know versus the devil you don't, right? It, yeah. it, I want to know what I have to yeah. pay in advance. I don't want to be surprised. So guest today, Dean Graziano from New Jersey, pharmacist and now Medicare specialist. specialist. Reach out to him, 732-221-7494. You can text him. You can call him. Call me. You can whatever you prefer. And then you go website. on dgmedicare.com and you can his emails on there and you can message him and you can do all book kinds of things. Book appointments on there. Book appointments. But call me. Call him. Have a conversation. Yep. That is the number one thing. Get your plan done correctly. Absolutely. This was awesome. I truly appreciate having you on John. and sharing this crazy mixed message. It's great being crap. here. Great being here. Yeah. And we only touched the beginnings. There's a lot of stuff we can talk Assume about. Assume you come back and we do round two of this. What do you want to discuss? We can actually break it down individually from Part D's. We can talk just prescriptions. All right. Well, let's, because let's get there's a lot. You know, that changes, and, and also the things change every year. All right. Every year they're up. We'll get you on, and we'll do that. This was really, really wonderful. Sounds Thank good. You. Had a great time.